In this video, we'll be looking at covering a really cool and underutilized CSS property, columns. With them, you can make multiple columns like this without any media queries. It just works and it's awesome and browser support is really good. Internet Explorer even supports it. Hi, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kevin, and this channel is all about learning how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it, with new videos every single week. CSS columns are awesome and really easy to use, so this video is part of my Coding Quickie series where we look at covering CSS concepts quickly, giving you enough info to know how to use them without wasting your time. So let's stop wasting your time with this intro and jump right into it. So just really quickly, I am on CodePen for this, so the link to this is in the description below. Um, here we can see I've just done a really simple thing. I have an H1 over at the top. I have my div class of columns here, and inside of that, I have four paragraphs of the first one having a div class of intro on it. So I'm gonna hide that away because we don't really need it. And here, um, I'm just have my body and my H1, just some really basic styles, nothing really going on there. So we're gonna move down and write everything here. So you can declare columns on any block level element, whether it be an entire div or just a single paragraph. So first we can look at, I had my dot intro. So on this, I can tell it that, well, it should have some columns. So to do it, we can do a column count. And I'm just going to do two. And this first paragraph breaks into two columns, or we could say three. And that first paragraph up there is now three columns. Um, and then we can make that, let's change dot intro here to dot columns to change the whole thing into it. So now we can see that that whole area has turned into three separate columns. So I can go down and make that two. I could come up and make it five, whatever I need. Now, one thing you might be noticing with this though is the first paragraph isn't aligning with these other ones here. So as you may know, paragraphs always have a margin before and a margin after on them to create the spacing between them. And um, that can always be a little bit annoying because you know you don't always want those to be there. And in this case, what's happening is this is all part of my second paragraph. So because the space before, the margin before is here and it's after here, there's no actual space on top of it. Well, as this one has a margin on the top. So a simple solution uh, in this case is just to select all my paragraphs and say margin top of zero, whoops, like that. And now at least everything will line up nice and tidy. So just be aware that margin top can cause some alignment issues depending on how you're using this. And then the second property that comes into play here is column width. This is cool because it's not a set value exactly, but it's the minimum width you want your columns to be. So let's take a look at how this actually works. I'm going to take this column count off and I'm going to change it to column width 250 pixels. So what this is saying is this is the smallest I want my columns to be. And technically speaking, they can sort of get smaller than this depending on the container size and stuff, but it's sort of the ideal width. And most of the time it will be the minimum size. So if I make this bigger, now I have five columns. And as I make this smaller, four columns, three columns, two columns, one column. That's really cool, right? There's no media queries in there. I pretty much have one line of CSS that's creating this. So basically it's saying if I can fit, right now I can fit four columns, and what happens is here, they're gonna get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and then once there's enough room to fit five of them at 250 pixels, it'll fit five of them in there. Or if I go this way, oh, there's not enough room for those to all be 250 pixels, so now it'll go down to four, and now there's an enough room, but oh, now we only have enough room for three of them at that size. And it automatically adjusts them to make sure that it's working. So that's really handy. And as you might have guessed, we can combine the two of these together. So I can do a column count three and have a column width of 250 on there. So if I go bigger and bigger and bigger, now it's maxing out at three. It won't actually give me more than three columns, but when I get smaller, is if they run out of room, so that again, this is the ideal width or the minimum width that you want them to be, we'll see that all of a sudden there's two. Even though I'm saying there should be three columns, it knows that we also are caring about the width of these columns. And if I get smaller and smaller, now there's only one. That's really cool, right? That I can do all that without a media query. I mean, this stuff is sexy. <laughs> um, and you can actually combine all of this into a single just columns shorthand. So columns, three, 250 pixels. Um, and that will work exactly the same as what we just saw. And I can do 250 pixels three, and it will still work exactly the same way. 
and you can actually ignore one. If you do a unit list number, it's assuming that's your column count. And if you put in width a unit, it's assuming that is your width that you're after. So if I did that as with a two, um, it will work just fine as well, as you can see. Um, so yeah, you can put one or both of them with the columns shorthand. And in general, I would recommend, and I think it is recommended that you put both, but it's up to you how you want to use it. So let's just put that back up to a three here. Um, now, no, another cool thing that we can do, and I really like this, is our column rule. And column rule is actually another shorthand property. This is shorthand just like border property is shorthand. So with border, you have border width, border style, and border color. Column rule, you have the same thing. You have column rule width, column rule style, and column rule color. But nobody, when you're using borders, generally uses all of them, right? So I'm not going to do it here either. We're just going to do a one pixel. Uh, let's do dotted. And uh, I don't know, like an EEE, -E -E, so it's a pretty light color. That's too light. We won't be able to see it. So there we go. So you can see these lines have come in between my columns. And once again, it's really cool because when I go down to two columns, well, now I only have the one line. And if this drops down to here, there's no line to worry about. So I can put lines in between my columns and not have to worry about you know, making sure they're there or not there with media queries or something like that that you might otherwise have to use if you were using Flexbox to make your columns or something. But one thing you might notice right now is this line is really close to these columns. There's not a lot of space in there. And I can actually come in and change that with the column gap property. So column gap will let me control how much space there is between my columns. So I could make this space bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller up to zero you can't do negative on this um, and it will change the spacing between them and I think a three looks decent for this one and the your line here will just be dead right in the middle of whatever that space is so I think that's really cool that we can control the gap like that uh, and just so you know the default is 1m that's I think what all the browsers will default to on the column gap but you can set it to whatever value you want it to be and one last one that I want to look at, and I'm going to do this on one of the children. So I have my dot intro. This works on a child of something that's using columns, and it's called the column span property. There's only two properties available, the default being none, and all is the other one. And you'll see this first one is now spanning all the way across. So it means ignore the gaps, just span all the way across. So my intro can now span all my columns inside of there and then my other ones will work as expected and then you can put this on any child that you want to so that can be really handy but there is a big downside to this or a bit of a downside anyway and that's as good as browser support is for this column stuff sadly firefox doesn't support column span which is kind of weird and just speaking of browser support it's really good but different browsers sort of handle some of the stuff in a little bit of different ways. So I'd really recommend checking out how the browsers are handling it when you do this. Do some cross-browser testing and stuff because sometimes it doesn't work quite how you expect it to. But it works really well across the board. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot more to columns than what I've looked at here. So I've also put the link to the MDM stuff about this down below if you're curious. I think this is enough to get you started and, you know, being able to understand what you need to to get working with these. If enough people are interested, though, I might do a deep dive into this, including some use cases for them, just like I did for my margins and padding series. But for now, that's it. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up or even better, leave a comment. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get even more content like this every single week. And a big thank you to those supporting me through Patreon. It's thanks to them that I can keep making videos like these. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.